I have decided to do a video today on the book series that I have completed. And these are only on book series that are already completed, not book series that I have completed on what is out so far. Book series that are completely done and that I have also completely finished reading. I'm going to skip <laughs> the obvious ones like Harry Potter and Twilight and Divergent and The Hunger Games. I've read those, we don't need to get into that. I'm also not going to talk about duologies. I think it's only going to be trilogies and more because duologies are just two books, whatever. The first series that I'm going to talk about is the Curse Workers trilogy. It is, it starts with White Cat and then uh, Red Glove and Black Heart. And as a whole, I think I would rate this series four and a half stars. Um, it's unique and fun and dark and gritty and awesome. The Curse Workers trilogy is about a world where people can curse other people by touch and it is illegal to do that so everyone has to wear gloves whether you can curse people or not. And it's about one guy, Castle, who doesn't have the ability to curse but he is from a family of cursors. I can't remember what they're actually what they actually call them, but he's from a family of people who can curse and but they do it anyway illegally and he just kind of gets caught into this whole big crime thing. And so it's kind of like a mobster story, but with like magic involved and it's really cool. The next one I have here is the Blood of Eden trilogy, which starts with the Immortal Rules and then the Eternity Cure and then the Forever Song, which first of all, can we please just stop to admire these covers? They are gorgeous. These books are about a dystopian world where now everything is run by vampires and if you want to kind of live in a more secure environment where you get fed and you can live in a proper home, you have to live under the vampires and you have to donate blood to them, but you're also, you're not completely secure because you know they might eat you if they want to. <laughs> and it's about a girl named Allie who despises the vampires and she doesn't live under them and she ends up being turned into one and a whole bunch of stuff happens after that but you have to read to find out and overall I think I would give this series four and a half stars as well. I have the Delirium Trilogy which is Delirium, Pandemonium, and Requiem. For any of you who don't know uh, the Delirium series is also about a dystopian world but it's not like a super rundown type world where they have come to the conclusion that they think love is a disease and when you turn 18 you get cured of love which is pretty much just getting a lobotomy <laughs> so everyone who has had the cure understands why it's good to have it and they think love is a horrible thing it makes you do crazy things and uh, the main character in this, Lena, is excited to get her cure, but then she meets a boy, obviously, and starts to fall in love with him, and is like, what? You can't take this away from me. And it's about the whole rebellion against that stuff. I absolutely loved Delirium. I loved, loved, loved it. Flew through it. Immediately went out and bought uh, Pandemonium uh, when I was finished it. And I didn't like Pandemonium as much. I rated Pandemonium four stars, but looking back, I feel like it's more like a three or three and a half star, because it did take me a little bit to get through it. And there was a lot, there were a lot of parts that I thought were kind of boring. Uh, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to read Requ Requiem, but then when I did, I thought it was worth it and it was a lot better than the second book. And I thought it kind of ended the series off really well. So overall, I would give this series four out of five stars. I have also completed the Trill trilogy, which starts with Switched and Torn and Ascend. I also just realized I haven't been saying any author names. I'll just post them right here on the screen probably. So I actually believe this trilogy was originally self-published through ebook and the first book or the first two books or something did so well that a publisher uh, picked up her series and then published it as actual books and since then she has been putting out books left right and center. Um, which I thought these were okay. It's about a girl who finds out that she is a troll which they look like regular people, <laughs> they're not like gross weird looking things, but she finds out that she's a troll and she had been switched at birth basically like she's a changeling and all the weird things about her finally start making sense when she finds out that she's actually not human and she goes to the troll town or city or whatever and finds out that she's like a princess or something. It's just about her dealing with the whole troll city and her just being obligated to do a lot of certain things because she's like royalty there and there's like some wars that happen and there's some love triangles and stuff and it was 
decent, I guess. I really liked the dialogue in it, uh, but I didn't think it was really anything special, uh, and I would give this series 3 out of 5 stars. The next series that I have here is the Under the Never Sky trilogy, which starts with Under the Never Sky, and then through the Evernight, and into the Still Blue. This is about a futuristic world where people live in these pods, and they can't go outside of the pods because it's, like, toxic, and a girl ends up going outside of a pod, and it's not toxic. <laughs> but then she meets this guy who has never lived inside the pods, and she has to try and find her mother because her mother was kidnapped. Yes, she has to try and find her mother because her mother has been kidnapped and she's in some other weird pod or something like that, and she does it with this guy, and that's about it, I guess. <laughs> um, I thought these books were okay. I didn't love them. I mean, I enjoyed them enough, obviously, to read all three of them, but I... They didn't really stand out to me. I don't think they lived up to the hype that I've heard surrounding them, and I gave this 3 out of 5 stars. And I'm not going to hold all the books up because there's 10 of them, but the other one that I'm going to talk about is The Confessions of George Nicholson, which is told in diary form in the point of view of a 14-year-old girl who has never kissed a boy or anything, but it's like her life's mission to become the girlfriend of this super hot guy. <laughs> and the story progresses beyond just that because it's 10 books obviously so there's more stuff that happens and but it's just it's just funny and ridiculous and like just the, the way that she writes into it and how she like writes what time she's writing and how often she writes in it it's just good fun funny I started reading the series in grade 9 when the first book had just come out and so I kind of grew up reading them and it's just they're fantastic and hilarious and ridiculous so I gave the series 5 out of 5 stars. I wish I could put The Raven Cycle on this list but I'm still currently reading The Raven King so it's not quite but it's fabulous and I love it <laughs> and I feel like this series will be a 5 out of 5 stars when I am completed it but I can't officially be in this video. You guys should leave in the comments any series that you have finished that you want to tell me about. <laughs> And you should also check out my Kickstarter. It goes until June 19th, and it's for my newest book, Chloe Diller, and I'll leave all the links for it down below if you want to find out more information about the book. But um, the Kickstarter has prizes, and a bunch of them are limited, so if you want in on it, you have to do it soon, before they're all sold out.